hello again to all our friends in Bukas Lob sa Dios community. Ito po ulit si Father Lem from St. Mary's Parish in Warto, New Jersey. I hope that everyone is well today. Our topic for today is about the Blessed Virgin Mary, and I have to be honest, first of all, that in talking about Mama Mary, I do not know where to start. There are volumes of encyclicals, books, lectures, conferences about Our Lady, and to go through them will not be enough. So let me try to condense in 30 minutes, more or less, my reflection about the Blessed Virgin Mary. For our discussion, we will focus on the scriptures and the teachings of the Church regarding Our Lady, making some references to the Catechism and selected parts of Chapter 8 of Lumen Gentium, entitled The Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, in the Mystery of Christ and in the Church. The one from Lumen Gentium is so important in our Catholic life. And so after 30 minutes of our lecture, we aim to accomplish the following. First of all, to have a little review of Our Lady's role in salvation history. And then we also aim to have a greater understanding of Marian devotion in our spiritual life. And then also to appreciate and imitate two virtues of Mary based from the account of the Annunciation. And finally, to understand in simple terms the criteria which the Church uses in judging the authenticity of Marian apparitions. So let us begin our teaching by praying the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And now let's read from Luke chapter 1, verses 28, 26 to 38, and I will read from the Revised Standard Version. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom, there will be no end. And then Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your kinswoman Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So let us begin our discussion about Our Lady, and we ask her mantle of protection to be with us as we listen and learn through this teaching. I would like to start by quoting this passage from number 55, chapter 8 of Lumen Gentium. Mary is already prophetically foreshadowed in the promise of victory over the serpent, which was given to our first parents after their fall into sin. Likewise, she is the virgin who shall conceive and bear a son, whose name shall be called Emmanuel. Mary stands out among the poor and humble of the Lord, who confidently hope for and receive salvation from Him. After a long period of waiting, the times are fulfilled in her. The exalted daughter of Zion and the new plan of salvation is established. When the Son of God has taken human nature from her, that Jesus might, in the mysteries of his flesh, free man from sin. And 
I would like to add a paragraph from the 2009 document entitled, Do Whatever He Tells You, The Blessed Virgin Mary in Christian Faith and Life, which is a statement of evangelicals and Catholics together. In that particular document, they said, Mary's act of faith and her giving birth are at the beginning of the incarnate life and mission of the Savior. The New Testament also depicts her gathered with the disciples on the day of Pentecost. She was at the foot of the cross and at the close of Christ's earthly ministry. When other disciples had fled in fear, Mary remained. When from the cross, the dying Lord told John to see in Mary his mother and told Mary to see in John her son, we may understand that symbolically speaking, John represents all the disciples through the ages who will love and honor Mary as the blessed mother of their brother and their Lord. Clearly, Mary has a special role in the history of salvation. In fact, we could say that because of her yes, what we call as her fiat, Jesus Christ came to the world to save us from sin. And so, my friends, whenever we talk about Mary, we actually talk about Jesus. It doesn't mean that they're inseparable. It just means that the life of Mary is always focused towards Jesus Christ. When the angel greeted Our Lady, Angel Gabriel said that she will be the mother of the Messiah. In other words, Mary's life is always pointing towards the Lord. Nothing in the life of Mary is about herself. It is all about Jesus. And I'll give a few examples of this. Our Catholic doctrine of the Immaculate Conception is about the redemptive power of Christ in Our Lady. The Blessed Mother, in the first instance of her conception, by a singular grace and privilege granted by Almighty God, in view of the merits of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the human race, was preserved from all stain of original sin. At her Immaculate Conception, she was already preserved by Jesus Christ. And talking about the Assumption when Our Lady was assumed to the heavenly glory, body and soul, we believe that she is now with Jesus in the heavenly kingdom. And it also tells us about Jesus. The Assumption of Mary is partaking of the promise of redemption which was fulfilled through the resurrection of Jesus. And in fact, in one of the pastoral letters of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines on the Blessed Virgin Mary, dated February 2nd, 1975, the title of that document is Ang Mahal na Birhen, it gives us this warning that if the assumption of Mary is left disconnected from the resurrection and ascension of Christ, it can quickly become a devotional optional extra and ceases to be an anticipation of the universal and cosmic transformation of all creation in Jesus Christ. Therefore, even the assumption, Jesus is the ultimate goal of our life on earth. And we will soon follow Our Lady in the place where Jesus dwells, and she is an example for our daily living. As a matter of fact, in Lumen Gentium, again, Mary is considered as the sign of true hope and comfort for all of us who are still traveling this earth. We read, In the meantime, the mother of Jesus, in the glory which she possesses in body and soul in heaven, she is the image and beginning of the church, as it is to be perfected in the world to come. Likewise, Mary shines forth on earth until the day of the Lord shall come, Mary is a sign of certain hope and comfort to all of us here, a pilgrimage of the people of God. And the last doctrine is the doctrine of the Theotokos or the Mother of God or God-bearer. When they defined this dogma during the Council of Ephesus in 431 AD, they said that the Mother of God, not that the nature of the Word or its divinity received the beginning of its existence from the Holy Virgin, but since the holy body, animated by a rational soul, which the word of God united to himself, according to the hypostasis, was born from Mary, the word is said to be born according to the flesh. It still talks about Jesus. 
In fact, the argument behind the Council of Ephesus was the reality of defining the divinity and humanity of Christ. And Mary, being the mother of Jesus, was a bearer of both the divine and human Jesus Christ himself. So my friends, to have all of us have a sound doctrine of Mama Mary, let's always remember that she points us to Jesus, anything about her, everything about her, Assumption, Immaculate Conception, the Mother of God, the Theotokos, is all about Jesus, and she points us to Christ. It's worth noting in here what happened in the wedding at Cana. We know the story. And in fact, in the story of Cana, we should combine also what happened in Calvary. There, in both instances, Jesus and Mary. But I would not go into a full theological explanation of the chapter. What I want to emphasize here were the words of Our Lady, do whatever He tells you, pointing to Christ. She didn't say, do what I tell you since I am the mother. Nope. She pointed the servants to look to Jesus and to obey whatever He will tell them. So Mary points to Jesus Christ at every moment of her life. And this should be foundational in every, any Marian devotion. We do not stop with Mary. Rather, we're always ushered into the life of Jesus. Because Mama Mary will always be true to her word. Do whatever Jesus tells us to do. Bringing us closer into the heart of Christ. The second point I want to emphasize is we should learn and imitate the virtues of Our Lady. When we go back to the Gospel reading earlier, we could see two important virtues, obedience and humility. Let's start with obedience. It came from the Latin obedire, meaning with and to listen and to perceive. Clearly, before obeying, Mary was able to listen first of all to the words of the angel. And it just makes a lot of sense. It was the angel who greeted her, then Our Lady responded. She listened, and then she spoke. Let's now put it in context. How about us? How can we practice listening and obeying the Lord? Let us be like Mary, who listened first and then obeyed. She listened to perceive and then obeyed. In our conversations with people, let's approach them with a listening heart. Listening is not only hearing, but also perceiving and understanding as well. We listen so as to understand. Some people listen to give an urgent reply. Maybe we could kind of change that a little bit. Let us listen to understand first of all, and then when given a chance, we can respond. Secondly, let's imitate Our Lady in her humility. According to Teresa of Avila, humility is truth. And knowing that Mary is the, herself the mother of the daughter of the Lord, she in whole humility responded that whatever the angel would say to her, she would just obey and follow in all humility. The same with us. To imitate Our Lady in her humility, we should know that we're created by the Lord and that the Lord holds everything in our lives. We owe nothing. Rather, we owe everything. So Our Lady is teaching us this important aspect in our spiritual life. Be humble before God and others. Listen, obey, and be humble. I always love the expression that Our Lady gave the angel, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to thy word. I remember a similar Christian song about that. Be it unto me according to your word. In all humility, we should submit ourselves to Jesus and be like Mary, who just relied on the work of God in her life. Where else can we learn of Our Lady's obedience and humility? At the foot of the cross. There, she stood watching our suffering Lord. There, her heart was pierced again like a sword. And like Jesus, she united her heart with the heart of their Savior in sacrifice. She obeyed and was humble like Christ for our sake. My friends, when we are in sorrow and just feeling lonely, look to Mary and Jesus, and for sure we will find hope and comfort in our every need. And finally, I would like to end my reflection and talk 
about the apparitions of Our Lady. I ask you, dear friends, to always look to the church whenever there are alleged apparitions. Always check the local bishop and the Vatican for those apparitions that have been approved. This is the best way to look into them because there are guidelines in knowing which apparitions are authentic or not. We know according to St. Paul that Satan could come as an angel of light. So be very careful with the apparitions. Do not immediately believe. And as St. John wrote in his epistle, test every spirit. Let me, let me just give a few pointers about the apparitions. There is a document that was released by the Congregation on the Doctrine of Faith, known as the Norms Regarding the Manner of Proceeding in the Discernment of Alleged Presumed Apparitions or Revelations. This particular document was released in 1978. And in a nutshell, let me share these three important things. First, know the message of any alleged apparition. Is it authentic or just taken from other resources from the internet? Is it based on scripture and tradition of the church? Secondly, know the visionaries. Are they living a life of prayer and sacrifice? Finally, the time factor is so important. If the apparition persisted a number of years, then there is something to note for. But as always, I would like to ask everyone to look to the Universal Church for judgment of these apparitions. Especially in our country, the Philippines, many say that the Virgin Mary appeared to them. There should be investigation, of course, prayer, discernment. Look to the visionaries, previous visionaries of approved apparitions, like in Lourdes, in Fatima, La Salette. There, bear the teachings. And know that Our Lady continues to point us to repentance and live according to the words of Jesus, her Son. All in all, my friends, as we talk about our, our, our Lady, words are not enough. What matters is this, that our devotion to Our Lady should lead us closer to Jesus. It should also remind us to be like Mary in her virtues of humility and obedience. Mary served those who are in need. Remember the story of the visitation? The Blessed Mother stayed with her cousin Elizabeth for three months, and we would like to think that she served her to her maternal needs of her cousin. I think I do not need to elaborate more on how we can practically do our lecture or apply it in our daily lives. We simply need to look at Mary and imitate her at all times with her closeness to Jesus and the place where she is now, beside our Master, where she will be waiting for us. And so our true Marian devotion, rosary, prayers, should stem from our understanding of Our Lady as leading us closer to Christ, and that our actions should show how we love Our Lady. Maybe at times to check our devotions. Are they leading us closer to Jesus and to one another? Does her rosary increase our love for Jesus and our neighbor? If so, we should continue with them. But if not, then we should re-examine them. Why is devotion to Our Lady very popular among us Filipinos? Because culturally speaking, we're very close to our mothers. And with Our Lady being the mother of all, we could find refuge in her mantle to lead us closer to Jesus her son. God bless you all.